today, so we will go with that. Hello, hello, and welcome to Mac community, Minnesota Agile community, and we are here today with Kara Kaufman. And I've seen Kara present uh, in different communities that I've also been part of. She's going to hear today talk about online engagement for virtual teams. If you are, God forbid, working with virtual teams, and you can only think of, can they turn on the video? Will there be enough engagements? She's going to give us some tips today to carry back with us uh, in groups and, you know, which, which we can which we can all benefit from, I guess. And say, having said that, Kara, the floor is yours. Excellent. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And I'm excited to share this information with you guys. It changed my practice and I'm hoping you guys will be able to walk away with strategies that you can use with your teams tomorrow. So I'm actually going to pick up kind of where Anu left off. Um, it is we, it's snowing like crazy here in Colorado. We have 20 inches of snow out on the ground. Um, so my first activity for us is actually going to be the waiting room. Um, and we'll, we'll dive in. I'll tell you a little bit about myself in a little bit. Um, but if you kind of zoom in on the board to this waiting room area, um, the task is to add a picture of your favorite snowy activity. Mm -hmm. I'm an indoor cat. So mine is reading in front of the fire. <laughs> There are directions um, at the top for how to add images to a mural if you've never done it before. And just to the left are some general tips for using mural. So how to zoom in and out, how to move left, right. Um, we'll start off with, yes, it's called reading, adding those images in. So there's two ways that you can do it. Um, you can click the images icon on the black um, toolbar on mural, or you can always just go to Google and copy and paste. So someone put in, it's called reading. It's how people install new software into their brains. I love that. And then if you guys want to play around with either adding a sticky note with your name or adding a text box with your name, it will give us a chance to get to know each other a little. And if you hear a toddler crying in the background, it sounds like my two-year-old just took a tumble. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Excellent. So we got some, some beverages, hot cocoa and some wine, some good food, ATVing. I feel like I should have done a, a, a waiting room on book topic. We've got at least three readers in this group. Love to see it. I don't like what I'm doing here. You're doing, great. You're doing great. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. Is that your actual dog or a, 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 an internet image? That's my real dog walking last year when we actually Very had cute. lots of snow. I love his little sweater. I love <laughs> his sweater. Excellent. So why as you're sticky, I don't want a sticky. I'm just going to like use a sticky though. Sorry. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, while you guys are putting your finishing touches on the waiting room, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you a little bit about myself. So just keep a listening ear out. Um, I am a scrum master, a former middle school teacher, and a toddler mom, which I like to say is the trifecta of you can't scare me. Um, <laughs> I have a pet cat who I absolutely adore. He is perfect, if you'll yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> um, I love gaming, cooking, and crafting. If you haven't seeing the craft station behind me that's that's what I like to do when I'm not here a little bit about what we're going to do tonight um it's really easy to say that these are activities to have your team do but what I'm really going to be prompting a lot is asking yourself what do I want engagement to look like on my team is it engagement that everyone is checking boxes or is engagement that people are finding new ways to put in information are they finding uh, ways to connect and build on what each other are saying. In education, we talk a lot about the difference between engagement and compliance. And compliance really is that checking off of tasks. They did it because I asked them to, but they didn't really go deeper. Versus engagement when they are finding 
sometimes a sense of purpose or engagement, and they're starting to draw new ideas into what they're doing. So the strategies tonight are really designed to give you a variety of ways that people can engage with their teams outside of just, we showed up for the meeting, we did stand up, and now it's time box, we can go on to programming now. Um, so again, they're not really a checklist, it's consistent embedded practices that challenge the team to interact in new ways. And most engagement is based in relationships and trust, which is why we started off with that uh, waiting room activity. I'm gonna bring us just here where it says strategy one. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what the purpose of a waiting room is. Anu did it really informally with us, with asking us about the ice cream flavors. I like to use the waiting room because people trickle in at their own pace. So it's a great way um, to get rid of some of that awkward silence at the start of meets, but it's another way for them to get really familiar with how to use the platform you're on. So you all learned how to use some of the tool features in Mural, just in our intro five minute get to know you activity. Um, it helps on time or early arrival um, because if you really hone in on the type of questions your team likes to answer, they, they're they looking forward to putting in um, their piece. And it's that team builder, a conversation starter at the beginning of the meeting. My second strategy for you is using a, a tool like Mural or uh, Miro boards. They're a great way to increase retention. Visuals, we know, especially with my education background coming out again, but uh, visuals are shown to increase retention. Um, it's really interactive. It lets participants preview materials ahead of time, which sometimes can take a, an element of surprise out of what you're doing. But if you have a team that's reluctant to share, a lot of times it's because they're reluctant to be put on the spot. When they can preview the material that's on the board, when they can kind of see where the conversation is going, some of our more introverted teammates have a chance to jot down a couple ideas, plan ahead what they're going to say, and it reduces the anxiety of being put on the spot suddenly. And as a presenter, it's a good reminder so you don't forget pieces and accidentally leave things off. Any questions before we, or ideas before we head into the next strategy? Excellent. So, I'm gonna take us over to the right a little more and you should see a section called GIM kit and gamification. I'm going to load up a GIM kit and Anu is probably gonna kick all of our Pratishkases because she's she's played this game with me before. Um, GIM kit is an online platform. You can use, uh, you can use like pre-created questions from other people or you can create your own. Today, we are going to play Disney Princess, The Floor is Lava. Disney Princess because theoretically it's accessible information for most players straight out of the gate. But as you're playing, I want you to be thinking about um, what kind of questions could I use with my team based on this format? I'm gonna put our join code on the board. Let's see, it is 42278. And I'll put the link for joining and the code in the chat as well. So in the chat is now the gimkit.com slash join and then enter code 42278. The game that we're playing, The Floor is Lava, is a collaborative game. We are going to be working together to build a tower before the lava overtakes us. Some of the games on this platform are individual. Some of them are team versus team. They can be competitive or they can be collaborative. It depends on the settings. A little later, we'll explore some different functions and uses that you might apply to GimKit. But for now, we're going to use our Disney princesses. And like I said, I want you to be thinking, how could you see using this with your team? All right. I think we have eight. Do we have eight or nine people in our group right now? It's eight. Ten. Oh, we have, we have nine. Ten including, including you. Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. We're all in. All right. So. 
in the game, you're going to get prompted with questions. You need to answer them. They're multiple choice questions. To build the tower out of the lava, you'll hit the shop button. You're using completely in-game currency. There's no way to, to use real currency in the game. And then we'll go from there. Go ahead and click the start button. Normally it has sound. Um, I have it off for the purpose of today, but you might hear sound on your end. Hmm. So if you can see my screen, if you toggle back and forth or you set up so that you're seeing both at the same time, you'll see the lava and you'll see our tower. As you guys answer questions, you get points. And then when you click the shop button, you can use those points to buy things like bricks, scaffolds, ladders to make our tower taller. Mm -hmm. Game has started. We're in trouble. I will say you are working as a collaborative team. So if you get stuck, you could always ask and see if someone can help you out with an answer. Oh dear. I just spent a negative dollar. Who's Tiana? Who's I've never heard of her. Scar? Who is Scar? <laughs> is she a princess with long hair? Do you guys know? Scar is okay. the what uh, Mufasa's brother that tossed him off the cliff. He's a lion. From the Lion King, yeah. Oh my goodness. It's very traumatic. We'll stick wow. with whoever was asking about Tiana or Tatiana, that is from Princess and the Frog. Mm. I guessed and got it right. Oh shoot. Okay. All right, that lava is starting to rise. If you have points, I'd recommend you pop into the shop and buy some bricks. Uh how do we go into the shop? You just click on the dollar. There oh, should yeah, yeah, okay. Get the dollars, see what happens. Anybody have fifty dollars? I don't have fifty dollars. Oh, excellent. Cheryl's been adding planks. Andrea added a brick. Um, oh. I wish. Let's see where I'm at. Go back. Angie's got those planks going. Yes, yes. <laughs> hmm. The lava height is 571 feet or blocks. Ooh, Ooh. it's rising! Wow, very cool. Goodness. <gasps> Oh, we all died. <laughs> I need ice cream. <laughs> I'll take chocolate. <laughs> to soothe our burns, to soothe our burns. Yes, exactly. Well done, well done, well done. So it's just a snippet, but I wanted you guys to, to get the flavor, if you'll forgive the continued ice cream yeah. reference. <laughs> of how the strategy works. I'm gonna bring us back to the mural board and I've got these stickies set up. I'd love for you guys to click on a sticky and type in some ideas. How could you see this being used on your teams? What purposes or topics could you see utilizing? 
Well, I'll claim one. I, I've used this to review working agreements with my team. No. I think a lot of times, especially with working agreements, we there some teams get into this zone where they're like, yeah, yeah, I know it's in there. And then it turns out maybe they don't really, maybe we do need a refresher on some things. Love it. Someone said communication, validating. Reverse engineering something. I love that. Supporting other teammates, sprint goals. I've used it um, for conversations about prioritization. Hmm. You, can, you have to get kind of creative with some of the questions on that, but kind of bringing it back to what, what did the stakeholders, what does the PO actually kind of bring us into? Um, backlog ideas, I love that. Voting, review DOD, yes. Dependencies. Um, I've used this before with, I'm going to say loosely with, uh, research spikes, um, especially if one person or to break down silos, really, if one person has a lot of knowledge on an area that the whole team needs, it's a great way to get information out quickly. The other thing, um, that has worked really well is getting to know the other people on your teams. So if each of us submitted uh, a fact about ourselves to um, Sheldon, our scrum master for the day, and he plugged it in, then we'd be playing, but we'd also be getting to know each other. And that could be a, a good icebreaker or an intro activity for a retro in particular. These are excellent ideas. These are excellent ideas. Um, when we gamify, it kind of breaks down some of those barriers. It makes them... Uh, it gives different points of entry for information acquisition. Um, there'll be a place later on where it talks about the different games that are inside. So you can explore a little bit like, okay, this was a team building. Maybe I do want to pit my team, my players against each other. Maybe I've got a really competitive team. How might that work for us? It also brings us into uh, strategy four, which is wait time. Super uncomfortable, but so important. Uh, awkward. Wait times are healthy, even if they don't feel great. And so a lot of times it's very tempting to fill the space. No one's talking, no one's asking questions, no one's volunteering. Um, I sometimes will even set myself a timer where I'm like, I'm not going to say anything for 30 seconds and I'm just going to make them sit and squirm a little bit. Um, it's awkward at first, but the more you do it and the more you hold consistent with that expectation of I'm not going to jump in to answer the question, the more they'll start realizing that this is a pattern and start kind of working with you on that one. Um, some points, if you've got an over talker in your group, I am a perpetual over talker. So I'm not going to say that these strategies have been used on me personally, but they're effective is what I will say. <laughs> Um, there are challenges that you can set with people on one-on-ones. I wouldn't do it in a whole group setting. It can be kind of demoralizing, but one-on-one -on -one to say, Hey, I've noticed you're really driving a lot of the conversations. Are you wanting, like, how can we bring more voices in and setting challenges like wait X amount of time before you jump in. So I, as a scrum master, set a timer for myself, but having your over talkers set a timer for themselves it's interesting to watch the rest of the team's reaction because they're used to Angie jumping in and answering the question for us. And suddenly she is not. And so suddenly someone else has to start stepping into that role. Uh, another strategy that I've used with teams is try three before me. So if I'm the over talker, I have to wait for three other people to speak before I put in my thought or my consideration. On the other side of that, if you've got someone who's consistently under participating or not turning on their screens, it's a great opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about what the root of that partic non-participation is. Because a lot of times it's not actually defiance, sometimes it is. 
But um, sometimes there's an anxiety about being on camera. Sometimes there is nervousness about sharing ideas. A lot of times, especially with our engineers, there's some big imposter syndrome happening. And they're the most brilliant people you have ever met, but they don't believe it. Or they might be fronting to, to hide some of that. Um, there's a book called Immunity to Change. And I've, I've left the link here on the yellow sticky note. It's click, double clickable. Um, it's a great one for how to walk someone through some of those reflective practices of starting to identify why am I not participating? What are pieces that we can put in so that we start uh, we start engaging with that? Um, I like to work one-on-one -on -one with full setting with my, my quieter people. And sometimes it's, hey, I want you to keep a sticky notepad by your desk. And I want you to write out your thought. And then I want you to to say what you've written, because maybe speaking on the spot is uncomfortable for you. If you hold up, so sometimes I'll even work with people say, set up to like, oh, they're holding up their card. Like that doesn't mean anything to anyone else, but I as a scrub master can see it, that they're holding their sticky note or their card in their hand. And so I know to pause and maybe call on that person specifically because they don't feel comfortable jumping in. They have something to say, they don't know how to break into that conversation. There's different one-on-one -on -one strategies that you can really set up in that in that individual space to change how the overall group communication is rolling. So I'm gonna pause for an uncomfortable wait time. Are there any questions or ideas? Any practices or strategies that you have used for over or under talkers? I have used that. Um, I've had to specifically ask some people to not <laughs> jump in, you know, like you said, you know, try to give other people the opportunity because, you know, nobody on the team was saying anything, waiting for the one person to answer everything. When you did that, what changes did you see or did you see changes with the rest of the team after that? Um, it did help, you know, with enough, enough silence when they realized that he wasn't going to speak <laughs> and they, they did start talking then. It, he said it was a huge challenge for him not to talk as well. So it was good on both sides. <laughs> yeah, an opportunity for everyone to grow at once. Yep. Anyone else? Talking about huge talker, I have to jump in. I write in my laptop and I keep uh, mentioning that saying either shut down or talk slow because coming from where I am coming, I talk 260 or 230 words per minute, which people can understand. So I just have these little notes in my screen, you know, asking me to do that sometime. Visual helps, right? Like I'm in the flow and I keep going on and on. But then when I see that, I'm like, oh shoot, I need to do that. I need to stop. Well, that's a great strategy to prompt your developers with too. Like to have them three before me or they write, volunteer once as their goal, right? <laughs> Sometimes it starts with baby steps. So that actually brings us into to strategy five. Some of our developers are less likely to verbally participate, but if we are offering more intentional chat opportunities, they are more likely to put their voices into the conversation just because it's not a verbal presentation. But uh, if you're just like, put it in the chat, sometimes that's not enough. So strategy five is um, there are different types of higher order thinking chat prompts that can make people intellectually engage with the task, um, but kind of do it in a fun way. So we're going to practice with one of them. It's called emoji because blank. And the prompt is... What was your overall impression of the GIMP kit activity? So we're going to practice it as a group now to reflect on the GIMP kit activity. And here's how you do it. You're going to open up your chat and you're going to respond with emoji because blank in the chat. And the rule is you can't pick a standard emoji like the thumbs up or the smile. you got to get a little creative. And I've given you two examples on the board. The first one is a bed because it felt comfortable or an alien emoji because it was strange. When I just saw a news uh, comment about using cricket sounds for the awkward wait time, love that.
If you're not sure how to access different emojis inside of um, the Meet platform that we're in, um, if you follow the little arrow above strategy five, uh, it'll show you the walkthrough of how to get to your emoji boards. I love that, Cheryl, because the tower, oh, because the tower was burning down. <laughs> Heart eyes because it was fun, crazy face because of trivia, maybe not being a, a strength. And I called Angela Angie earlier because I thought I'd seen that somewhere on the screen. Do you prefer Angela? Either's fine. Perfect. A crown because it made her feel like a princess. Love it. A little sweat. Con oh, because you don't like time games and couldn't figure out how to budget your time. But now as your scrum master, I now know that that's something that stresses you out and we'll build around it. So the, the idea behind something like emoji because blank is that you're giving them a platform to choose whatever type of response, but then explain why they chose it and getting to know your team that way. Sometimes people are, are like, I, I live in a different country. I didn't get any of these references at all. That's happened a couple of times. I was like, I didn't even think about that. We did a Halloween themed game kit for just an icebreaker and trick-or-treating isn't a thing that happens in, in, in South Africa where he was from. And it was like, oh, I need to be more aware of that. So a puzzle, a cactus because the brain went dry to think of a response. That is the perfect analogy for that. And that is the analogy I never knew I needed. I'm going to take us into strategy six, which is, an, is a pre-thinking activity and it's using um, word clouds. And I think so, raise your hand if you have used a word cloud before you're familiar with word clouds in general. All right. The idea with the word cloud is you input information and based on how many times that comes up, the text becomes larger or smaller. So if fun goes in three times, fun is really large. If engagement goes in once, it's very small. But I use it on my teams as a pre-thinking activity before we jump into even things like planning or our retros or um, any, of, any of our major meetings or ceremonies. So it's a great way to start getting them to think about the concretes that impact day to day. So sometimes you can prompt them with like, okay, what are our blockers? And now they're actually having to sit and think about what the blockers are before we have the conversation out loud or what their impediment is. What is the dependency that we're dealing? What are some of the dependencies you could predict running into in this sprint? And now they're generating them. They can build off of each other. So I'm going to have you click that link and hopefully it's still live. We'll see how this goes. Very good. And you're going to describe your team engagement in a single word. I think we're all trying to get to the link. Is there a way let that me, you can post that in the chat? Yeah, let me, okay. let me post a better link in the chat for you. Okay. All right, try the link in the chat. Not sure if I'm seeing this right. It says um, register for credit. Um, there's, there's a skip. Got it. Below got that, it, got it. Yeah. you don't have to put your name in. You can pick a skip be below that, um, and then it should look like it. It's like a black screen. It says describe your team engagement in a single word. Ooh. And then I am projecting our real time word cloud. So this is what I love about the link that I shared with you, the pollev.com, is that a lot of word clouds, you have to have the information ahead of time. You have to put it in and then you have to generate. This is one that does it real time. So we've got curious, confused, crickets, active, good, fun, choppy, non-existent, which is kind of 
a, a normal team. Not every day is going to be like super on task rolling every day, but we're kind of a mixed bag. So if you're someone who's got better engagement happening on your team, um, like hearing some of the things that you guys are doing would be a great help, especially once we get to our final section, there's lots of time to share out and do some collaborative thinking. I love it. While we're still inputting that, um, I'm just kind of kind of cover some other pieces uh, that can help, especially, oh, a news dropped another link that's very similar in the chat. Um, because they're anonymous, they can be a really great way for people to be honest in their feedback, which can be great, or it can be a little surprising. So sometimes moderating ahead of time is like, hey, remember, we are all a team. Please be kind as you are entering things. Um, but it can be one of those ways for some of your quieter people to get their honest feedback into a conversation without having to front the idea itself. Um, it's also a great way to just get a lot of different perspectives all at once. So like all eight of you were putting in information at once. It wasn't that we have to wait one at a time to hear each voice. Has anyone used this kind of tool with any of your meetings, teams, or projects? Cheryl's nodding. Not have lately. You... It's a good reminder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I have not I've done it. Whole EV a few times, but I have not used Mentimeter. Yeah, I've got to check that one out. I'm going to pull that link and save it for myself so I can do a little nerd diving later. <laughs> Excellent. I'm going to take us into strategy seven, um, and it is timers. Our events are time boxed, but even inside of things like retros, having a specific time frame for how long you want certain pieces or activities to be going is a great way to keep that pacing fresh um, and to really make sure that uh, you're going to have time to hit all the topics that you want to hit. So I love that Mural, and I think Miro does as well, has the timer embedded. So you can even have it go off with different chimes. It's, if your team is doing your retro already in one, everyone can see it, everyone can hear it, which is fantastic. Uh, there's a lot of digital lean coffee templates that have timers embedded, and you can also use one in Zoom. There's a tiny link there. At the end, I give you a doc that has all of the links and easy to get places. So don't worry about collecting links as you go. Um, YouTube also has a lot of really great ones. I personally use the YouTube ones with my toddler. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we have five minutes left at bath time. But I also use it with my teens. Hey, we've got you know, it'll just be running in the background. There's there's seven minutes left of stand up. Is this a parking lot issue for after the meeting? So just having them present is a great way, especially if you're noticing your meetings are going long or dragging in some unexpected ways to kind of bring that sense of not urgency, but mindfulness back into it. And our visiting raccoon just added one as well. Ooh, I'm intrigued already. It says monster race countdown. Whoever that was. Thank you much. Thank you much. Strategy eight is just kind of a, a reminder about strategic variety. So we are doing a whole bunch today because that's what the topic of today is. But in a normal meeting, I'd pick like maybe two or three max because you want to be intentional about one, why you're picking that activity. You've got a quiet group, so you're hoping to get more chat response for a bit right? You're, you're being intentional about the strategies that you're choosing so that you're A, not overwhelming your team, but B, really targeting the desired effect with your, with your teams, with your developers. Um, they thrive on structure. So having a little variety is great, um, but having something where they know what to expect, they know how to prepare, they know what's expected of them is a huge advantage. And strategy nine is visually posted directions. So for each of the tasks that we've done today, I have had directions and usually an example already posted. For some of uh, your really visual learners, it helps really increase their focus. Uh, we know developers sometimes get on bunny trails and the way they go, um, but it can really help hone them in. 
We also live in an incredibly interconnected world and chances are you may be working with someone on your team that English isn't their first language. They're, maybe they're completely proficient. Maybe they look per, or sound proficient, but they need a little extra processing time having directions and the example posted. It's one of those little things that's so easy to overlook but has a huge impact and then additionally helps those team members feel seen. So you're seeing an increase in their understanding and their production, but you're they're also, even if it's subconsciously, being like, I I am having my needs met by this, by this meeting, by this strategy, by this team. Um, and it increases accountability, which is one of my my big things. Questions, ideas. So that rolls us into our second line. And you'll have to forgive me because my mural proficiency does end at being able to pull you all to me. I know that is a thing, but I haven't figured that piece out. So I'm on the second line where it says menu boards. Ah, Kristen did it for me, thank you. So menu boards are a strategy that is particularly great if you have a lot of information you need to give your team in a little bit of time. So maybe your team is in the process of transitioning to a more agile or scrum based like strategies. Maybe your team is somewhere in the safe process, right? Um, there's a lot of information that needs to be given and giving them the ability to choose which one they're accessing and the order they're doing it and how they're doing it can really increase engagement. And that's different than compliance. So compliance is they're checking off each one. Engagement is you're giving them opportunities to actually dig into something that they're choosing, that they, they, they're pursuing intentionally. Um, so a couple prompts that I usually give when I'm doing menu boards, um, to some, some people will just do the first three automatically is pick the one you've never heard of. It might be pick the one you've always heard of, but never had the time to actually get into pick the one with the title, starting with the letter closest to your name or the one that's close to, the title's closest to your pet's name. Different kind of weird prompts are a way of kind of breaking out of, I'm just clicking the first three so that they're actually reading through the titles of all of them. Because if you're picking the one that's closest to your name, you got to read through all of the titles to get there, which means the next time they're picking an activity off of the board, they're already aware of what the other options are. So here's my task. And it's going to be a little bit of a quiet dead air for us while we start. And some of you have already begun and I love it. Um, I would love you to click through the different strategies. We're going to do like five minutes for you to just explore any link you want on your own. And then when you start thinking of how you could use this on your team, there's a box for each strategy where you can drop stickies with ideas. So for example, if you wanted to learn more about those waiting rooms, how we started with the snowy activities, uh, there's a summary, some tips, and then a link for the uh, mural board where I've given different ways you can structure them for different purposes and tasks. So you can use them to set up a pre-thinking. You can use it to, for fun team building. You can use it to gauge the room. As you're looking at these things and you're like, oh, I could do this with my team, you just double click and you add a sticky note with how you're envisioning using it with your team. And then we'll bring it all together in about five minutes. But I want you to kind of explore, start thinking about where you want sticky notes.
We've got about 45 seconds left in the exploration part. All right, so if you're still like, if you're engaged in the one you're in, keep going, just put out a listening ear. What was something that jumped out at you where you were like, oh, I used to do that all the time and I totally forgot, or this would work well with my team, or I don't think that would work well at all. What jumped out at you? I like the lean coffee. I think that works great with like groups of scrum masters. Um, you know, so if you're having a scrum master meeting, mm -hmm. um, one of my other teams, it would probably work with the other one would absolutely crash and burn. I like lean coffee too, even for retros with my teams, because it forces them to bring their topics. So like you have to have engagement in that way. Otherwise there's nothing. But then we do time box and do like thumbs up, thumbs down voting um, at the end of like 10 minutes. And like, are you OK? Do we want to keep talking about it? But I think that that helps kind of speed through a variety of topics. And like if there's some lighter ones in there, usually I have a few that I'm like, these are some heavy hitter things that we should probably talk about. So I'll pepper the field a little bit. Cool. The Teacher. chat prompts were fun. Very unexpected. Yeah. I like those. And it makes you have to not assume that you know exactly what's coming next. Right. And when you have to skip letters, I think mm -hmm. that's one of the stickies on there is you really have to think about what you're saying when suddenly you can't use certain letters or you have to make a sentences together. I like the use of the um visuals in the waiting room activity. Mm -hmm. One of the waiting room prompts that I did a while back was what was your favorite childhood TV show? <laughs> uh, boy, we got some answers. <laughs> <laughs> really neat ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it was interesting because there were references to shows that people hadn't heard of that everyone had heard of. And suddenly that became a running theme through the whole rest of the meeting, much like our ice cream was. Well done on you. One of my teams used to name their sprints after obscure movies. So oh. like when I joined the team there, they were in the hot tub time machine sprint. <laughs> I kind of love that. <laughs> That's very yeah. funny, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> My husband has, uh, oh shoot, I now I forgot, I'm blanking on the name of the platform, but they essentially, it's a visual of an office and they can drop themselves into rooms so people know what everyone is working on, but they can rename their their rooms and sometimes it's characters. And so one, one of them will start off with Luke Skywalker and by the end of the day, you've got like a Sith half of the room and a Jedi half of the room and they're tossing barbs <laughs> back and forth at each other and it works well. I expected. Were there ones that you have used before with your teams? Um, I did the breakout rooms. I had a gal who didn't really like to talk in front of the whole group. And she also, there were certain people in the group that if she were paired up with them, she wouldn't have talked. But just coincidentally, even though I kind of tossed it out there that I had just done random breakout rooms. I specifically put her with someone <laughs> who I knew would, you know, bring out the best in her. And so the two of them, you know, talked and talked and talked, and then they came back and had all these great ideas. So she got to participate and she totally wouldn't have really said much if she had been with a different person. Well, and that really comes back to um, kind of what we talked about in the intro is that engagement is based in relationships and trust. 
And so when people feel comfortable with the people they're with, and they, and they feel like that's a safe place, that's when they're really engaging, they're coming up with these ideas, they're putting in more, they're, they're taking a risk with a new idea instead of just trying the, the same thing over and over again. So then I'm gonna turn it over to you as people who are interested in this topic. What are things that you have tried that aren't on this board where you've seen successes with your teams? And a success can be a small victory, if not a, a one war. I did not do this with my team, but I share a wall with my husband who sits on the other side. So he, with his teams, um, looks like they had very less participation. So the scrum master of that team brought in 10 minutes before time to come and just mingle and do the Wordle game together. Oh, so, yeah, so they were all like either getting into finishing it before and letting others know that I solved or jumping in and trying to finish it before even the okay. daily, daily scrum started. So that was a brilliant way. And I thought, ah, oh, I should implement that. That is great. <laughs> cool. My husband's team, so my husband's also a developer. Um, his scrum master periodically books them um, escape rooms. They're, they're digital escape rooms and they make his day. He talks about them for the rest of the week. I've made some before um, on Google Slides. It's like, it's a thing, um, but there are professional ones that you can sign your teams up for. And the puzzle solving, especially for dev brains, it just, it itches a scratch for them. And they're working together. They're having to collaborate. Um, yeah, she's she's had great success with that. That's cool. And then we have just a little bit left before I'd like to head into our mini retro. Um, what patterns are you seeing on your teams or have seen in your previous teams that you would like us to mob as a meetup group? I have a team that is struggling with psychological safety. And part of the reason, well, there's a couple reasons for that. They had um, last year, I think I was the fourth scrum master they had during the year. Ooh. And so they, you know, when I joined, they were like, yeah, you'll be gone soon, kind of feeling to them. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so now I've been there six months, at least that's getting better. But um, they, uh, mm -hmm. There were also some layoffs. Mm -hmm. And so they sort of felt like if they talked, you know, during a retrospective, for instance, that they were putting somebody's head on the chopping block mm -hmm. or, you know, something like that. So they tended not to participate, <laughs> especially in retrospectives, because they didn't want to give any feedback. That could be weaponized. Yep. So of the strategies that either you've tried or you've seen here or that you've heard another Scrum Master try, which what are, are there any that you feel like could help your team? Yeah, um, I've really had to take it super slow with them because of this, you know, like I said, the whole Scrum Master thing, um, that in and of itself. Um, the one other problem I had with the team is that the dev lead said in one of the retrospectives, you know, when I was asked, you know, I, I don't even remember how I'd phrased the question about, you know, but it was something that they didn't like or whatever. And he said, retrospectives are worthwhile or are worthless. And, <laughs> and gamification of anything is terrible. <laughs> mm -hmm. wow. So that makes it a challenge. <laughs> yeah, definitely. 
Hmm. How about the rest of the group? Are there any ideas that you've tried or that you could see applying to Cheryl's situation? I also have a developer who loves, sometimes he says it most of the time he's joking, but he loves to throw out retrospectives are stupid in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And it is about the fastest way to kill any conducted or, or like yep. constructive conversation that you're trying to have. Yep. So I did have a conversation with him privately and told him, I was like, you get one per meeting, use it wisely. <laughs> I get that you're trying to play a joke, but like also we're trying to do things here. So yeah, that worked for a while. I think he, we did eventually have to tell him that he had to cool it entirely. But then I think one thing that helped was when he said that retrospectives because then his other joke was like, oh, every other Thursday, we have an hour and a half meeting that we could probably do away with, obviously, at the same time that retro was. Mm -hmm. So I said, if it's really not mm -hmm. constructive for you, or you're not getting in, out anything out of it, what could make it more beneficial? And like putting it on them to be like, if you really, mm -hmm. truly feel like that, please, by all means, suggest something that we should try to make it more beneficial because yep. you only get out of it what you put into it. Yep. And I actually have a meeting with this guy tomorrow. I think, yeah, it is tomorrow morning, uh, one on one. And we hadn't had one since he said that. So mm. that is on my list of things to mention to him. <laughs> well, and one of the questions that I've asked my teams is like the, the go to is like, what, what how would you design your dream meeting? But sometimes I actually start with the reverse and ask, describe the worst meeting you've ever been in. Yeah. It will go off. They've got lists of things. And then you ask, okay, so how would you make it better? <laughs> <laughs> and they have to come up with counters for what their, what their top complaints were. Kind of like Andrea was saying is putting it back on mm -hmm. to do some of the problem solving. I mean, we're, we're talking about, engagement right and so if they're not yeah. engaging giving it to them putting the ball in their court how can we make this engaging what would make this engaging what would make this uh, a useful use of your time yep excellent well and now we're bumping right up against six so i'm gonna usher us to the next piece um cheryl thank you for sharing that it's not always easy to put that out on the table and Thanks for letting us kind of mob it together. Um, I'm gonna have us jump into the retro activity. It's just a short retro. No one better say it's stupid. Just kidding. But, <laughs> but it's just a quick check-in and some prompting. So over on the right side of the box, there are these blue little circles and you can drag and drop to where you were um, for strategies that you can hopefully use tomorrow with the team. And then the other two are pieces of prompting. So what are our next steps? What is something, I'm gonna ask you to name something specific that you want to try with your team. And then name something that you might wanna do a little more reading on or follow up on. You're like, ooh, I'm not ready to use this Canva thing, but someone talked about the wheels on the car on their sticky note. Maybe it's something we do a little further reading on. Uh, maybe you're like, this gym kit thing has potential, but I'm going to need to play around with it before I do this with my team. Excellent. So we're getting some with uh, three before me, polling and the cloud word tools, Canva, timers, emoji because. And even I think it was Chris that was saying, it's like, oh, some of these I used to do. I need to pull those tools back out of the shed. I'm going to post in the chat. It'll be my last uh, piece to put in. Um, it's a summary sheet of the of strategies that we've talked about with links. So if the links are too tiny for you to click um, where you want, they are embedded throughout. Um, and then just quick summary versions of each of the nine strategies or 10 strategies that we talked about. So it's just in a concise location for you. Let's 
Excellent. And that's good feedback about needing more time for the uh, the menu boards. Excellent. Well, thank you guys for having me. I'm going to turn the reins back over to the Cheryl's. I can't, I don't. <laughs> really cool stuff. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Thank you very much, Kara. This is awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So engaging. And yeah. And I like the difference when you call up compliance compared to engagement. Yeah. When I started myself compliance versus engagement it mm -hmm. really a lot of activities that I thought were helpful for my team mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I was like oh this isn't actually doing what I thought it was doing maybe mm -hmm. I think you you've shown really you shed light being a mother mm -hmm. and a teacher and a scrum master yeah. I saw how mm -hmm. that all came through you know through this uh session and we cannot thank you enough um Kara uh we want to thank you together as a community because we have some news to share. Um, Kara is going to be our last speaker. I mean, not last, last speaker, but then we are retiring from Minnesota Agile Community Group. This meetup group will no longer exist or host meetup. I know, sad, but we would have not done what we could have done without all our leadership team who's right here today in this call with all our speakers, including Kara, thank you for such a wonderful farewell that you have given us today. Yes. And to all the members that we have had before and to few on the call today as well. We are not leaving you high and dry. There are a few uh, meetups that you would like you to suggest, you know, to, for you to go and join. Some are in the chat here and you would also be receiving a newsletter from us mentioning, you know, where you can go, in, uh, go um, not a newsletter, like the email blast, I'm sorry. Uh, saying, you know, which, which of these communities you can go and join. While it has been an amazing time, you know, serving you all and having you on our meetups, um, this is just time to say goodbye. And I cannot thank Kara enough for doing the honors for the last session. With that being said, I would leave it open to other members who've been way, way long before than me. I'm just the little puppy here. And I'll leave it to <laughs> Angie or uh, the Cheryl's or Chris you know, to take over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to say thank you to um, all of the planning members who have been a part of this. This has been an amazing journey. And I know that we will all stay connected and, and be friends. Um, all of the people in our community who have come to these sessions, engaged, been interactive and taken away and shared, you know, that they've learned things from the community. It's been a really great experience. Um, it's just time for many of us to move on. And so that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. I've put my LinkedIn um, URL in the chat. So if anybody would like to stay in touch, feel free to do that. And I'm sure a few of the other people or maybe everybody here will put it in there. Um, reach out to us, stay connected. We invite you to stay connected. And we know this isn't goodbye. We'll see you in other meetups because we're around and we'll see you again in the future. Until next time, as they say. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Kara, again, for a really fun one. Definitely. Really appreciate that. And thank you to all that um, did the heavy lifting for this group. Big time, big time, big time. Anyone would like to say something? Now is the time and or this, forever hold your peace. This, along with all of the other recordings, will be posted um, on our YouTube channel. So that will be, um, I don't know if we picked a date for how long those things will be out there, but it will be for a while yet. So if you missed some of our earlier sessions, um, feel free to catch up with those recordings. We have had some amazing speakers along the way. Yeah. And I really, really recommend going and checking us out uh, in the YouTube channel. That well, being said, yeah, yes. thank you. Yeah, we can officially end the recording and we can chat. But yeah, thank you all for being part of our family. <laughs>